Hello students and welcome to the second video in this lesson. In this video, we're going to be solidifying the concepts of position, velocity, and acceleration and their connections with f, f prime, and f double prime. Then we're going to start to use them in some graphical forms. So let's get started. So as I'm looking at this, um, we want to always correspond the position, velocity, and acceleration with f, f prime, and f double prime. So Kind of keeping that in mind, when we have velocity, you really want to think about, okay, that's f prime and my position is going to be f of x, okay? And that's going to be the motion of the particles going back and forth and how fast it goes, that's going to be our velocity. So when velocity is zero or undefined, well, the position of the particle that it could potentially be turning around there or it's just stopped at that point. So if velocity is greater than zero or negative, then we have it's increasing or decreasing. And then if it's changing from positive to negative, it's changing from increasing to decreasing, which means that the position has a local maximum position there. And if it changes from negative to positive, then it changes from decreasing to increasing, which means that the position has a local minimum there. So now let's look at the connection between acceleration and velocity. So the second derivative with the first derivative. So if the second derivative, if acceleration is zero or undefined, then the velocity has a potential change in velocity. It could go from positive velocity to negative velocity or vice versa. Or that means that the, the velocity is just zero, like the particle has just stopped. If the acceleration is positive or negative, then we know that the velocity is either increasing or decreasing. And then finally, if the uh, acceleration changes from positive to negative, we know that the velocity goes from increasing to decreasing, which means that the velocity has reached a local maximum. And then lastly, if acceleration goes from negative to positive, that means that velocity has changed from decreasing to increasing, which means that it's a local minimum. It has decreased that velocity. It's the most negative it can go in that area. All right, so now we wanna kind of keep it going. And what we have here is a graph that represents the position. Notice here that the way that it's represented this position is it is using the function s of t. And this the particles moving along the x-axis so think about the particle going back and forth like this in during the time but as it as that particle changes from you know the distance away from that origin then the further away it goes so then it kind of starts here and the further away it goes that position you know that's going to be b right there and then as it gets closer and closer and closer, that's going to be D. And then it starts to move further and further and further and further away. Um, and then it goes up to E and over to infinity. So that's what that particle is doing. And that's how it turns out in this graphical format. So it's just really um, time versus position on our Y axis. So at which points does the velocity equal to zero here? And we want to always justify our answer. And in order to say velocity equals zero, that's where we're going to have horizontal tangent lines. So we're going to have it at B and D. And the reason for that is because S of T changes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa, which means that it has a horizontal tangent there. All right, so now in our second question, at which points does the acceleration equal zero? And again, justify your answer. Well, we know that acceleration equals zero when velocity is changing but we were given s of t so we want to think about okay when does velocity change here well acceleration so a of t equals s double prime of t well what are we talking about so since we're looking at the connection between the second derivative and the original function and where it's going to be zero that's the point where we're changing concavity and we're changing concavity here at c so C is gonna be the point where acceleration equals zero, and that's because S of T has a point of inflection. All right, and so now our third question is, all right, where is the velocity positive? Well, the particle, again, we're given S of T and we're looking here, we're making connection between the velocity. Where is it going to be positive? Well, in order to be positive, since S of T, S prime of T equals our, our V, our velocity, well, we're looking where s of t is increasing so function where that first derivative is going to be positive that's where the original function is increasing so we're increasing from 
here to B and then D to E. So when we're writing out our intervals, you actually wanna keep in mind that your intervals are gonna be between zero to B because time has to start at zero. You cannot have negative time. So we're going from zero to B and then D to infinity. Those are the points where we're increasing. Now, the other side of that is we want to explain, okay, where is the function going to be decreased? And when is velocity going to be negative? Well, velocity is going to be negative. So we just want to switch that up to negative. Velocity is negative when S prime is, or when S is just decreasing. So when is this function decreasing? Well, we're decreasing from B to D. So now we want to say, okay, when is the acceleration positive? So when is A of T positive well a of t again is represented by the second derivative of our position function so s double prime of t and what we want to state is where it is positive so what does that state for our original function well what it's going to mean is that where is the function concave up where is the s of t concave up and so we're going to be concave up between c and positive infinity so that's how we can say that a of t is positive when s of t is concave up and then on the other end of that when we want to say when is the particle's acceleration negative well that's going to be when s of t is concave down which is happening again from zero all the way to c so zero to c because we can't have negative time and that right there is going to conclude our answers here for this graph. You might want to review the connections between F, F prime and F double prime, but really just think about how the verbiage changes from position, velocity, acceleration, and then you're good to go. If you do have any additional questions, please reach out to me. I'm Mr. Hernandez, and this is Mr. Hernandez Teaches.